everyone and welcome to another fresh edition of the show. I humbly remain yours, Bashir Shahabu Jammaji. Our guest today is a Nigerian academic, educator, publisher, and media scholar. He taught and still teaches media and science courses in many Nigerian universities and around the world. He holds double professorships in science and media and cultural communication, both from Bayern Basi Kano in 1997 and 2012, respectively. To hear more about our great personality today, be with us. Let's begin with this. The people who are watching us right now would like to know who is Professor Abdullah Obadam. Well, my name is Abdullah Obadam. I was born in 1956 in Deneji, that's in Kano City. So that means, uh, inshallah, by April uh, next month, I will be 65 years old. Mm. I attended my primary school in Dandagu, which is in the city. And then I moved to the Namalate Primary School where I completed. I left the Primary School because it was not very good, even at that time. I'm sure it has improved over the years. But the Namalate was much better. Uh, they had better teachers and better motivation to learn. Mm -hmm. After the Namalate, it was Gwale uh, Secondary School. We had the second set to open Gwale Secondary School in 1969. And we finished Gwale Secondary School in 1973. And then from 1973 uh, to 1976, we were at uh, College of Advanced Studies in Kano, mm. We were the first set of students to open that school mm. along Airport Road. Mm. In 1976, I was admitted in Amadebele University to study science education. Mm. And that, 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 that year was a very critical year for me, not just because I was in the university, but because of the career that I was supposed to do. Mm. Uh, my late father wanted me to become a doctor. Mm. I don't want to become a doctor because I don't think I was good enough. I just want to become a research scientist. Mm. And a research scientist uh, doesn't make money. It's not about money. It's, it's my interest. I, I just want to research. I want to discover things. I want to explore. Mm. I, I want to interrogate. And uh, I don't think I could have done it as a doctor, but then in any event, I, I wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. The preparations we had in Wallace County School did not really prefer us, our set mm -hmm. to become either doctors, engineers, architects, or anything. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I found myself in science education, which I didn't like. Uh, I really didn't like. I don't want to become a teacher either. Mm -hmm. I want to become a research scientist. But my grades were not good enough, mm -hmm. so I, I stuck to it. Eventually, I graduated uh, from Ahmad Bella University, did NYSE in Imo State mm. uh, from 1979 to 1980. And then in 1980, I was employed as a graduate assistant in the Faculty of Education by mm. University. Mm. Uh, ironically enough, I don't want it. Mm. I wanted to be a graduate assistant in the Faculty of Science, not mm. in the Faculty of Education. Mm. Again, I was not accepted in the Faculty of Science. I was only accepted in the Faculty of Education. Mm. So I started working in Bayer University in July 1980. Mm. And uh, I kept at it up to 1981 <coughs> when I was given a scholarship to go to London, University of London, to mm. study for my master's mm. in science education. So I spent two years in London, came back in 1983, continued working in Bayer University. Mm. And then in 1985, I was among the first Kano State Indigenous to get Commonwealth Scholarship. Mm. I went back to UK, this time to Sussex University, mm. where I did my PhD in Human Resource Development, Science Education and Human Resource Development. Mm. I came back to Bayer University and continued teaching and researching mm. uh, up to about 1991, when I was offered uh, a, a chance to become African Senior Research Scholar, mm. Pulbright, uh, at University of California, Berkeley. Mm where I spent a year and wrote a book. Mm -hmm. I came back in 1992 and continued. Uh, 1993, I was in Italy, uh, Rockefeller Foundation fellow resident, mm -hmm. uh, where I wrote another book, mm -hmm. came back, continued. And 1997, I became a professor of science education. Mm -hmm. I was 41 years old at that time. 
And uh, I, I said, I have no intention of staying in education for the rest of my life. Mm. Because at that time, you, you retire at the age of 65. Mm. So that means uh, this year, 2021, will have been time when I will have uh, retired. Okay. And I, I don't see myself from 41 years old to 65, mm. 24 years mm. in education. I, I, I don't see myself doing that. Mm. I got into education because of providence. Mm. So now I said, let me do something that I really like, something that I really enjoy, mm. research. Mm. So I, I, I moved into what really, really interests me, media and cultural communication. Mm. Not really because I want to become another professor or anything, it, it just happened. Mm. And then I kept into, into that. And uh, by God's grace, by 2012, I become another professor. Mm. So I'm the first person in Kano with two professorships mm. uh, in Nigeria, actually. Mm, professor. But I have only one salary. <laughs> that answers the question you ask. Yeah. I would love to have two salaries, yeah. but I only have one salary. But the honor, mm. the prestige mm. of being a person with two professorships is more than money because it's not mm. something that money can buy. Yes, yes. It is something that has been recognized by the intellectual community, mm. and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. So that's a little bit of. I have a wife, one. Mm -hmm. I have no intention of having another wife. At all. Not at this age, anyway. Yeah. At 65, mm -hmm. what will I do with another wife? So I have one wife that I love very much. Mm. We have been together for about 34 years. Mm. Uh, we have four children. Mm. Uh, two of them, ladies, are married. Mm. One is a computer programmer, the other one is a lawyer. Mm. Uh, the lawyer is not living in the country, she's living outside the country. Mm. Then I have a young man who is studying at the University of Bolton. Mm. And then uh, an absolutely wonderful teenager mm. uh, who is about to enter into a senior, senior high school. Mm. So, that's it. <laughs> yeah. What's the name of the university that you studied in London? That oh. you go to scholarship? The university you go to scholarship in London, what's the name? The university of London? Yes. Yeah. The university that you got the scholarship to study in London, what is the name of the university? In, 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 in London or in, in the UK? In, in the UK, sorry. Well, it was the University of London. Okay. I was given what I think probably we were the last part of the last batch of Kano's indigent to be given foreign scholarship. Mm. But it was the University of London. Okay. University of London operates multiple campuses. Mm. So you have uh, Imperial College, Queen's College, uh, London School of Economics. Mine was Chelsea College of Science mm. uh, Education. Mm. And then where I did my PhD was Sussex University. That was under British Commonwealth mm. Scholarship. Mm. And then I did my residency as a Fulbright Scholar at University of uh, California, but Berkeley campus. University of California also has multiple campuses all over California. Mm. Uh, you have uh, Davis, you have uh, uh, San Francisco, mm. you have Berkeley. Mm. So I was in Berkeley. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I understand you got the chance to study on scholarship. Do you think that the availability of scholarship during your time is much better than now? It is much better because during our time, you don't have to be the son of anybody to get it. Mm. You don't have to be attached to any politician to get it. Mm. If you are good, you go. If you if you if you get the admission, you just simply take it to them, and then they, they, they just get your scholarship straight away. Mm -hmm. uh, and you are given mo your money as I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I think the amount of money given to us was not huge mm -hmm. by today's standard, but it was massive by those days' standard. Mm -hmm. It was sufficient for you to do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. See, the problem with our generation, even at that time, was that uh, you are in a foreign land. And you want to buy television, you want to buy sound system, you want to buy shoes, you want to buy uh, shirts, you want to buy jack. Mm. I mean, you want to buy all these sort of things. Mm. I wasn't buying those things, I was buying books. Because for the first time in my life, I have seen books that are cheap. Mm. So I was using my money to buy books, but a lot of our colleagues were using their money to buy sound system or jackets, uh, fashionable or things like that. Mm. But even let's look at it this way, you just restrict yourself to, your, to feeding yourself. Mm you'll be more than sufficient. Mm. Because your school fees have been paid, so what you have to pay is your accommodation and your appearing. Mm. Many people are curious to know that. How did you become the vice chancellor of the noun? Providence. Mm. Providence is what made me become the vice chancellor of the National Open University of Nigeria. Before I became the vice chancellor, I had been asked to apply or I have been searched mm. to apply, to encourage to apply to five 
universities mm. at five different times, mm. including the National Open University itself. Mm. And I said, no, I, I don't want it. I don't want to become a vice chancellor. I don't want to become a provost. Mm. I don't want to be a, a rector. I don't want to be anything. I'm happy being a nobody. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm a researcher. My focus is on research. I just want to continue doing my research. The kind of research that is called ethnographic research. Mm. Ethnographic research means d dealing with research at a local level, mm. dealing with local people. Mm. So I, the idea of me becoming a chief executive officer or a vice chancellor or a deputy vice chancellor never occurred to me. I, I just don't like it. So whenever they come and say, apply, I'll say no. Mm. Apply, I'll say no. Five times. Mm. Then one day, uh, on Friday, I will never forget that day, on Friday, the 12th of February, mm. 2016, mm. I got a call from NUC, mm. National Universities Commission, mm. and uh, the person said, oh, uh, Professor, congratulations. I said, for what? I, I thought that they were calling me to send me on accreditation, because that's, that's what we do, we go mm. on accreditation to various universities. He said, no, you have been made the Vice Chancellor of the National Open University of Nigeria. I said, I don't want it. He said, no, 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 it's not a question of you don't want it, it's, uh, it's, it's has been signed, I mean, they want to announce it now. Mm. And I was depressed, really, really depressed. So I didn't ask for it. In fact, I prayed against it. I didn't lobby for it. Mm. I didn't even know how my name got in there. My name just simply got in there. Mm. It was much later, after, after about three years, mm. that I was able to find the person responsible for putting my name, somebody who really believed in me. Mm. But he doesn't want to tell me that he did it. And I, I think that is a, a labor of love. Mm. Somebody wants you to do something because he believes in you. Mm. He doesn't come and tell you, I am going to do this for you. He just goes right ahead and does it. Mm. And I ask him, why didn't you tell me you are going to give my name? Mm. He said, if I tell you that I am going to give your name, I know your answer. It will be no. Mm. And I don't want you to say no. Mm. So out of uh, respect for you, we just kept quiet. And then the next thing, it was announced. And uh, Alhamdulillah, we have been able to, to do it from 2016 to 2021 mm. successfully. Mm. I thank God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy for me. Mm. Uh, and I think this is one of the, the, the life, the lesson of life, mm. is, is that things that you don't want, mm. you know that God will be behind you, God will be protecting you. Mm -hmm. uh, just like uh, he, he created you and he created the circumstances and he will be watching you mm. and God watched me mm. for all those five years and I'm grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. In short, one of the most important things that were not in existence before you went there and you brought them to reality. What? The most important things that you that that were not in existence before you went to the noun and you brought them. Well and uh, made the noun what it is today. When I got to the National Open University of Nigeria, it was located in Lagos. Mm. And being in Lagos means that a lot of people up north have no idea what the university is all about. Mm. So, the first thing I wanted to know is, where is actually the university supposed to be? And I was told, you can take it wherever you want. If you want, you can leave it in Lagos, mm. or you can take it to Abuja, because there is, Ted Fund has built a campus for the university in Abuja, mm. but they have not completed it yet. Okay. So I said, well, if we're going to allow them to complete it, it will take a long time for them to complete it because they will keep dilly dallying and so on. Mm. So let's just let's just move in. Mm. So in March, we, we I relocated the entire university from Lagos to Abuja. Mm. They still were still painting the walls. There was no furniture, so we had to use plastic desks and chairs. Mm. But we did it. It, it. it took about six months that we did it. And then gradually, the faculties started moving. What moved first was the vice chancellor and the principal mm. officers. Mm. And then later on, the um, faculties also moved on. Mm. And uh, by 2020, we have completed the total relocation from Lagos to Abuja. So that's the first time. Mm. Secondly, when I got to National Open University of Nigeria, I discovered that the data management Mm. of the university was outsourced mm. to companies, ICT companies, mm. two of them. One company controls the examination system. Mm. Another company controls what they call facilitation system. Mm. 
National Orphan University of Nigeria, as you are aware, doesn't have in-person teaching. They don't see students and teach them in person. Mm. They teach them by internet and by uh, computer technologies, by videos. Mm. So the company that, that handles the video part, which is called electronic facilitation, mm. is separate. It's outside the university. Okay. Then the examination system in about 88 study centers was also controlled by another company. Mm. And I thought, if a university has a department of computer science and teaches computer science, mm. then it has no business outsourcing its data management to a company. Yes, yes. They should be able to do it themselves. Mm. So we sat down and I tasked all of them to come up with a, a plan mm. in which we can now manage the data ourselves. Mm. That was not a popular decision at all. Mm. Because one of the companies was getting 75% mm. of whatever revenue that, that was generated. Mm. And the university was getting 25 oh. The other company was getting 85% and the university was getting 15%. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. These are our staff, our students, mm. our examination, mm. our scripts. All you do is just manage it. And you are taking about almost... It's 90 percent of uh, what we do mm. so I, I said no mm. we have to do it ourselves mm. no, that, it, it was not a very popular decision mm. i mean there are all sorts of write-ups in the newspapers against me nobody was saying i was chopping money though i said no i stopped people from chopping money mm -hmm. and I, I said don't care so we created a uh, director of management information system mm. we created a director of learning content management system we empowered and enhanced and expanded director of examination and demonstration. Mm. So the three of them control the data management in the university. So that mm. is one thing mm. that I'm very, very happy with. Mm. We're able to do that mm. and know the control is in, is in our hands. Before I, 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 I got to now, there are a lot of students who are stuck because there is a, a gap between the university ac academic system mm and the examination administration system, which is done outside by outsiders. Mm. Um, so we, we started weeding them out. We started sorting things out. In the five years, we graduated over 82,000 students. Uh, and the vast majority of these students were those leftovers from the inefficiencies of the former system. Mm. In 2020, we graduated 25,000 students. Mm. but. In 2021, we graduated 8,000. So mm. you could see it, it was sort of declining. Mm. Now, in 2019, we graduated about almost 18,000 students. Mm. So the students were going up, down, up, and then now it is s s lowering down because we now control all the system ourselves. Mm. So I think that is what we have done, which I think was, was fairly okay. Mm. Yes. That is a lot. That is great. And mm. um, it, it should. In everything that we do, there must always some challenges that we face along the way. What are the biggest challenges that you face when you are there? Well, the biggest challenge, as far as I could see, it was uh, getting National Offer University of Nigeria accepted. This is because of uh, our perceptions of pedagogy. Mm. Generally, Africans, Nigerians, Africans, all over, mm. we are used to somebody teaching us. You sit down in front of a teacher, and the teacher leads you and guides you. Mm. We are not used to a process where you are expected to learn on your own. When you buy a kettle, or you buy a pressing iron, mm. or a mic, or whatever, mm. inside the carton there is an instruction booklet. Mm. So you are expected to, to read the instruction booklet and know how to operate it. You don't have to go to another person mm. and ask them, how do I use this? It's the instructions are there, mm. even when you buy a car. They have a manual. Mm. So we are not used to learning on our own. We are not used to being independent learners. Mm. National Open University of Nigeria introduces a disruptive form of education that we're not aware of, mm. that you learn on your own. Mm. In fact, the logo of the university before we changed it was walk and learn. Okay. And I changed it mm. to learn at any place at your pace. Mm. So if you do very well in National Orphan University of Nigeria, it's because you studied very well. Mm -hmm. And if you fail, it is because you didn't study very well. Mm -hmm. And like a system where you could say, I failed because the teacher didn't guide me, he didn't lead me, he didn't show me the way. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people find it odd, mm -hmm. disruptive, difficult to be able to 
to study on their own. You are used to being plagiarized. You are being mm -hmm. used to ask, go and read. Mm -hmm. So that was the biggest challenge. How can we turn this around mm -hmm. and make people be responsible for their learning? Mm -hmm. So we did that through a lot of uh, advocacy, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think it, it worked because we are now having more and more students. When I took over the university in 2016, we had 254,000 students. Mm -hmm. And now when I left, we had 560,000 students, mm -hmm. double mm -hmm. the number of students because of the advocacy. And people are just coming in and are realizing very, very importantly that this university is just like any other university. Mm -hmm. The only difference between National Offing University of Nigeria and other universities mm -hmm. is that the National Offing University of Nigeria is superior mm -hmm. to other universities. Mm -hmm. Superior in the sense that you control your own learning. You are the driver of your own learning. Mm. You are not regulated by somebody who likes your cloth mm. or who hates your cloth. Mm. Somebody who will harass you. Somebody who will do all sorts of things to you. Mm. You, you are your. Own. You don't even see the lecturers. There was no lecturers to see. You deal with the course materials. Mm. The only time you, you, the lecturers even see you is during exam. And how can they distinguish thousands of students mm. and single out one person? Mm. So. I, I like to believe that National Offing University of Nigeria is superior because it is the place where when you learn, you know you learn mm. because you taught yourself. Nobody taught you. You taught yourself. You are self-motivated. Mm. Yes. When you got rid of those two companies, did you receive some challenges in time of managing the data management? But you see, that the irony of it. All those two companies were actually conducting their services in the university with the staff of the university. Okay. Hmm. The, the, the people who were handling all the things for them were not their own staff. It's not like they have uh, a team of people that are, no, they are using the staff of the university mm -hmm. and they are paying them. So when I broke up the relationship, mm -hmm. the staff of the university who were benefiting from those companies mm -hmm. were not happy at all. Mm -hmm. But there was nothing they could do. Mm -hmm. At least for that period, I was the law. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to do what I say. And I gave them a choice. Look, you either do it this way mm. or you leave. Mm. And I have a lot of people who will replace you when you leave. So I, I'm not bothered if you want to leave. You leave, leave. But this is, this is not about me. It's about the system. Mm. I am no longer there now. Mm. And the system is working. Mm. So it's not like I, it's a personal thing that I will do and then keep to myself. Mm. It, it's just for the system, for yes. the country. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it is discovered that some lecturers in Nigerian conventional universities use your study material as their lecture notes. Did you realize that when you were there? I even used it myself before I even got to now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I did. They, yeah. they were. And our materials are free. Yeah. Uh, anybody who wants them can have access to them. Mm. Uh, the students pay for them. Yeah. And the students are given. But they yeah. are all also uh, uploaded on the internet. So yeah. if you want it, just simply download it. You didn't them. accuse them of plagiarism. I'm sorry? You don't accuse them of plagiarism? No, 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 no. It's not plagiarism. Plagiarism was when you copy something and claim it is your own, where else it belongs to somebody else. <laughs> yes, yes. But yes, if yes. you are just simply downloading a material that is freely available, that's not plagiarism. Mm. So if anybody wants you the, the now and study materials, go right ahead. Yes. Thank you so much, Prof. We have a lot to talk about. Before we continue, let's go for a short break. Welcome back. Now let's talk about reading or reading culture in general. Prof, do you, do you think that there are some books like House of Romantic Novels that are useless and reading them is just like a waste of time? I don't think there is any written word by any human being in any era of human history that can be called useless. Mm. So long as it is written, so long as somebody can read it, it can never be useless. Uh, yes, uh, I, I could remember what happened in 2007 here in Kano where the government publicly burnt some books and said they're immoral and useless. It is not the books that are immoral. It is the people reading the books that are immoral. This is all part of the media effect theory where you believe that media is responsible for behavior, mm. which is absolutely wrong. Mm. Let me give you an example. Suppose there is an accident, a car accident, in which tragically, some people die. Mm. 
Are you saying we shall ban motor vehicles? Mm. We have a lot of accidents in which air, aeroplanes crash down. Do mm. we stop flying mm. or do we stop manufacturing aeroplanes? So it is not the aeroplanes, it's not the cars that are bad, it's the driver. Mm. So if, if, if a driver does something bad, mm. you cannot blame the vehicle itself. Mm. So books are written by people and it is up to those people to decide what they put in their books, not up to someone else. Yes. But do you accept the thought that a book that is written on crimes, for example, mm. or on something that is bad can change the reader can influence the reader no. to be a bad person no if somebody reads a book on crime and decides to become a criminal mm. it is because he already has criminal genetics okay in he's him genet yeah genetically he is a criminal okay but not because he has written a book if you ask anybody who is in my generation in their 60s they have read james hadley chase yes I they have read, I read them too. You read James Hadley Chase? A lot of them. Did it make you a criminal? <laughs> no. Profile, there you are. Yes. So it's not what you read that ma that makes you, it is who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, and do you believe that Hausa people have the best reading culture in Nigeria? They do. Uh, they do? Yeah. They read the Quran. Yes, yes. yes. Quran is a book. Mm, every that. Hausa Muslim read the Quran every single day. Mm. That's reading culture. Mm. Or are you saying reading culture is reading uh, foreign novels? Or foreign things or foreign newspapers and that's what makes you read in culture. You read the Quran every day. It's like mm. a book of guidance. Mm. You read it every day. Mm. You read in culture. Mm. Yes, let's talk about Kanyut. Mm -hmm. Everything that we do in this life, there must always be some people or things that inspire us to do that particular thing. Or sometimes we got the inspiration within us. How did you get your inspiration? To go into the activities of Canute? Well, initially I was interested in computing. I have always been in computers. Mm. And I was typesetting. Mm. I had a small company called Tangerine Dream uh, Computing Services. Mm. And I was typesetting for people because I was one of the very first people who brought computers from the UK. When I did my PhD, I brought computers. So I was one of the first people to do it. Mm. <coughs> and then I discovered that for those who are writing in Hausa, they don't have the characters like ka, ba, da. Mm -hmm. And then I started thinking, how mm -hmm. do I help them? How do I create those characters? Mm -hmm. Eventually, I purchased a program called Pontographer, mm -hmm. a software. So I was able to use that software and create mm -hmm. ponds. I created two ponds, mm -hmm. Rabiat Muhammad, mm -hmm. named after my mom, mm -hmm. and Dr. Abdullah, mm -hmm. named after me. Mm. And I released them in public domain. Mm. In other words, I copied them on a property. Mm. And I took them around all the business centers in Kano and asked them to use them free of charge. Mm -hmm. But I was also curious as to know how many people write uh, house and novels. Mm. That's, that's how the whole thing started. Mm. So I started talking to people like uh, Bala Anas Bible Lata, uh, Adu Ahmed Gilendabino, mm. Dangad Mubaba. Mm. And all these major writers, and all, and I was fascinated by the huge amount of literature, huge amount of books that they have written. Mm -hmm. So I started following them to study them. Um, I published quite a few articles on that, and then they moved to film. When film became available, mm -hmm. they moved to film, and I, I followed them, mm -hmm. documenting what 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 they do. Yes. So that's how I got involved with, with the with the popular culture thing. Oh, I understand. And it became easier for me to do that because, as I told you, I became a professor in 1997 when I was 41 years old. And I had no intention of spending the rest of 24 years of my working activity in education. So mm. I shifted to popular culture. Mm. And I was excited that this is something that I really like. I like music, I like uh, films, I like books. And then suddenly now I'm studying this thing in a much more structured ethnographic manner and I like it. Mm -hmm. As we all do have reasons to accept things or reject them, mm -hmm. some house of filmmakers, including the actors, say that you criticize them unnecessarily. What is your response to them? I have written about 107 papers. Mm -hmm. And I have submitted, uh, presented over about 200 uh, conference papers, attended conferences. Mm. And whenever I hear this, mm. 
I said, I, I, I am challenging mm. the entire film industry, all of them. Mm. Go and read all those papers and the court. They are online. They are all online. Mm. AUAdamu.com. Mm. That's where they are. AUAdamu.com. Mm. Read them and quote just one sentence where I said, how your films are bad. Just, just one place. Mm. If you do that, I apologize. But if you cannot do that, then I want the House of Fame industry to write a letter of apology to me mm. for spoiling my name that I'm criticizing them. Yes, yes. I, I am a, remember, I was a science student, so I was trained as a scientist. Mm. It, as a scientist, I don't pass judgment about this is right or this is wrong. Mm. I, I don't care. Mm. But I document, I record. And I communicate. Mm. That is what researchers do. Mm. That is what I've been yes, doing. Yes. What the House of Fame industry wants is endorsement. Mm. They want to be able. To, they want me to say, "You are the best. You are the best. You are the best." And I'm saying, "No, I don't care who the best. Mm. It's not a question of being the best." But there are motifs and structures in filmmaking. Mm. If film is supposed to be a literature mm. that reflects society, then what you could do is reflect your society. Mm. And that's all. That is probably where the disruption comes up all this business of singing dancing and all that mm. and we keep saying no 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 this is not house of culture mm. they say oh but there is singing and dancing in the house of culture i said okay like when your dad yes. married your mom mm. was he singing and dancing and rolling on the floor <laughs> no he wasn't so why are you trying to impose a narrative where a narrative does not exist mm. you sing and dance during a particular event mm. that is that is it but mm. after that it becomes uh, you know something else it's ceremonial mm. so it's it, they, they don't like being told that they copy from bollywood mm. so if i say you copy from indian films i'm not i'm not saying you are bad mm. i'm just saying this is what you do yes now if you feel that i'm not saying you should not copy from india copy from india for all you like mm. But whoever looks at it will say, but you don't have creativity. Mm. I mean, you, you are supposed to come up with your own film. Mm. Every day, things happen here in Kano, in Zaria, in Katsina, in Jos, that reflect life. Mm. If you want to really communicate to other people in the world about mm. your life, communicate what is happening. Yes. But you don't just simply pick up something from India or from America and copy it just to show that this is life. It is not. <laughs> yes, yes. So this is the debate and that. We even had a conference on it. Mm. Uh, I facilitated a whole conference on all this and the book was published. Pe right now, right now, there is somebody doing his PhD at the uh, University of Cologne mm. in Germany on, on this, mm. on this issue of culture and, and so on. Mm. So the, 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 the film industry does not like people observing what they do. Unfortunately, people have the right to observe what you do and they mm. have the right to document it. Yes, yes, exactly. They, they still say that, um, why don't you produce your own film? Though you have a documentary, you made a documentary, I know about that. They still the, why can't you produce a film where the director will say action and cut? Okay. Yes. Two things. Number one, let's assume you go to a restaurant, very expensive restaurant, mm. where the meal costs about five, six thousand naira. You buy it, you pay your money, mm. and then you find that the food is too salty. Mm. What do you do? You go to the manager and complain, this food is too salty. Mm. Do you expect the manager to say, why don't you open your own restaurant and cook your own food? Mm. What the manager will say, I'm sorry, we apologize, mm. we will do better. Mm. So the whole issue of saying do your own film does not mean that I have to make my own film in order to correct what I have seen mm. if mm. I have seen something bad. Yes. I'm a consumer. I have the right to the product that I want. Mm. So if, if, if I buy something and I don't like it, I have the right to say I don't like it. Mm. And you can come and if I buy a car and the car is, is giving me trouble, I, I have the right to return it to the manufacturer. Yes. And then the manufacturer turns around and says, go and manufacture your own car. Mm. That is not a good business model. Yes. Yeah, that, 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 that. So I'm a consumer. Mm. As a consumer, I have the right to, to do this. Secondly, I did better. Mm. When I was the Vice Chancellor of National Orphan University of Nigeria, I created PIM production. Mm. PIM production. We have PIM production, BSC PIM production. And I'm telling you, go and study PIM production and learn how films are being made. Don't just simply say, I have watched hundreds of films, I can become a director, producer, a singer, a scriptwriter. No, go and learn the process. There is a program, PIM production. Mm. And I'm telling you, 
we have students about 105 students studying film production currently in National mm. Open University of Nigeria, mm. and I don't think there's anybody from Kano. Mm. That's unfortunate. There you are. Yes. Uh, let, no, let's now talk about music and dancing. Oh my God, Prof, you are everywhere. <laughs> everywhere you go, everywhere one goes, they must see you. Just like MTN. <laughs> How did you get involved in hip hop music and decide to conduct research on them? I have always been interested in music as a child. Mm -hmm. Music has always been my passion. Mm -hmm. In fact, in 1974, 75, I almost became a musician. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the desire to study became stronger, so I abandoned that one. Mm -hmm. I was given my first guitar in 1969 by my dad. So my interest in music was endorsed by my father. Mm -hmm. He gave me a guitar. Uh, a, a acoustic guitar called ukulele guitar. Of course, I couldn't play it very well. Mm. But later on, I bought my own guitars. I have two guitars. Right now, as I'm talking to you, I have two guitars. Mm. There's an electric guitar that I have, and then there is a hybrid guitar, which is electric and acoustic. Mm. I have a bagpipe, you know, the uh, Scottish yes. bagpipe instrument. Mm. I have a roll-up piano. I have a violin. I mm. have a flute from Istanbul. So I have a lot of musical instruments. I've yes. been interested in music. Mm. So uh, uh, when I was in the U.S., uh, hip-hop was the rage. It, 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 I've always been interested in hip-hop music, mm -hmm. but getting in the U.S. means you are immersed in it. And so I've been interested. So when the film industry started giving me too much wahala, mm -hmm. I said, well, that's it. I cut up, moved on. <laughs> At that time, hip-hop was coming up. Mm -hmm. People like Billy O yes, yes. Uh, were, were starting I up. I think you should give me the doctor. That's right. <laughs> so I, I was uh, I was very very interested in hip hop. I love it, and I I, I think Normis G Normis G is a genius, mm. absolute genius. He's just amazing, mm. absolutely amazing. Not only is he a fantastic rapper, but he also has a fantastic way of showcasing mm. young rappers. Mm. Um, and so I, I I I like it as an mm. art form, as a research form. I presented a lot of papers. Uh, on it mm. and uh, so I, I think I love it and the hip hop community is a wonderful community they never say you are criticizing us unnecessarily mm. I, mean, I like the film industry where mm. they will come and say this they will come and say that but mm. the hip hop community accepts criticism they accept they accept to be pushed forward and mm. we have been doing that mm -hmm. yes of all the cities in Nigeria and around the world why do you want to live in Kano always in Kano identity because you are born identity. Yeah, I was born, I was raised here. Kano is my identity. I have lived in many cities mm. and I never liked them. Okay? I mean, I never liked the restaurants, I never liked the buildings, I never liked them. They are beautiful, but Kano is it. I like Kano, despite the the, the Kwatemi, the Shara, mm. the Yang Adede Tosohu, Yang mm. Achaba, the, like the thugs, uh, Masasata Rwea, yeah. the Entauli, and all that. Mm. Despite all that, I love it. Mm. It's, it's a beautiful city to me because it's the only city where I feel comfortable. I feel at home. Mm. I'm walking down the street. Okay, if you want to steal my phone, that is something different. I mm. mean, they steal your phone wherever you are. Mm. But nobody is going to look at me and say, go back to where you come from. Mm. You black bastard. Mm. That's exactly what happens in the United States. Mm. You are black. Somebody hates you simply because you are black. Mm. I'm not a criminal. I'm not a drug dealer. I don't have a gun. I don't have anything. I happen to be black. Mm. And you hate me. Hello, I didn't make myself. That's mm. how God made me. Mm. Kano is the only place where you feel safe and comfortable. As it says, everyone has a time for everything. Of all the things that you have achieved in your life, how much time do you have for your family? All the time. We are very close family. Like I told you, mm. four, four, four children, two have gone, they are no longer with us. Uh, they are married up, and then we have two. Mm. And now with uh, social media, Everybody is, my wife is on her phone, mm. my son is on his computer, my daughter is on her phone, I'm on my computer. Mm. So we, we are connected. I mean, we sit down and, and talk about anything that, that we like. We sometimes yes. we go out for lunch mm. or dinner as a family. We just simply go out to a restaurant and just simply chill out, you know. <laughs> yes, that is yeah. good. There is this big argument that whether there is anything like house of flying, or is it only house and flying? The term House of Pulani was created by Southern Nigerian journalists during the Murtala Mohammed regime. Mm. When they were looking at the number of uh, Northerners who have ruled the country. Mm. And uh, Northerners always keep telling you that they are Pulani. They will mm. tell you, I'm a Pulani, Shagari is a Pulani, uh, um, 
sorry, don't know, I was a Polani. Everybody was still telling you he's a Polani. Mm. They are Polani, but they don't speak the language. Mm -hmm. So the, the southern journalists just simply call them out. That these people are Polani, but they don't speak the language. They only speak Hausa. So they are Hausa Polani. Mm. You know, Hausa speaking Polani. That's actually what, what that term meant. Mm. It, it's, it's not an identity ethnic marker. Mm. It was not used to, to, to map out a particular ethnicity. It's just saying, house speaking Pulani. Okay. That's exactly the expression. Mm. Oh, they are house speaking Pulani. But somehow the other, the speaking part was dropped and house of Pulani came in. There's nothing like house of Pulani. You are either Pulani or you are house of. If yes. your father is house of Pulani, you are Pulani. If your father is house you are house Okay, it is from the father. We yeah. take it from the father. Uh, all societies uh, ma map the identity from mm. patrilineage. Mm. It's the father. If your father is a Polani and your mother is a is a is a is a, is a, is a Jamaican or mm. Canadian yes. or an Indian, yeah. you are a Polani. You mm. can't say I'm a, a Jamaican or a Canadian. <laughs> yes, yes. These curses come out of curiosity. Though they say curiosity killed the cat. Thank God I'm not a cat. Do you Thank want God. to do you want to enter into politics in the future? Definitely, absolutely undeniably no <laughs> i hate politics i hate the ideology of politics i hate the structure of politics i have absolutely no intention of kidding myself or fooling myself or deceiving myself into thinking that i could be a politician i'm not a politician i'm a researcher yes. that is how i want to be remembered for and that's how i want to live my life up to the end of my life writing papers publishing papers giving talks but not in politics <laughs> if you are given a chance, for instance, to be the Nigerian president, what is that one thing that you want to change? One thing? Attitude. The attitude of people? Yeah, attitude. Attitude of people. Be more responsible. Attitude of people. All these chaos and things like that is because of attitude. Selfishness. Everybody is thinking of himself. Mm. Attitude. The leaderships are thinking of themselves. Followership are thinking of themselves. Mm. So attitude. Once you change an attitude, that, that's what the whole agenda of this government was all about. Change. Mm. But it's something that takes a long time to do. It's yes. not something that you do in a day or in a, in a couple of years. Yes. Everyone accepts that you are deeply intellectual in our society. Do you have something that you still want to learn, but you don't have the time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lots. Arabic. Okay. There is, there is, if there is one thing that I really want to learn more than anything, is Arabic. I want to learn Arabic. I want to learn. It's just like Bala Usman said, he, he, he regretted not learning Arabic. Mm. Learn Arabic. And music, of course. Music composition. Mm. So these are the two things. But Arabic, I want to learn Arabic so that I can, I can read the Quran and understand the Quran. Mm. Appreciate it more. So, and, and I'm making efforts of that. I have a lot of videos and I have uh, structures in order for me to learn. So mm. it's Arabic and music composition. Yes, it says a word of advice is like a second mother to a child. Mm -hmm. What is your advice to the people who are watching you right now? Be yourself. Be yourself. That's it. Be yourself. Don't try to be anybody else. Don't try, don't let anybody manipulate or control what your life will be. Just be yourself. Be your own role model. For instance, my late father wanted me to become a doctor. I don't want to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. So we had this argument. You don't want to become, I said, I don't want to become a doctor, but sir, if you want to call your son a doctor, don't worry, you will do that. Mm. But I don't want to be a doctor. I want to be a researcher. So be yourself. Don't, don't let anybody uh, control you or manipulate you into doing their lives. Live your life. Be yourself. Mm. Mm. Our dual prof, I think from today on, if I want to call your name, I have to put the word dual. No, you don't have to. My name is Abdullah. Just call me Abdullah. I'll be fine with that. You won't be insulting me when you call me Abdullah. You won't be insulting me when you say Malam. Oh. If you have to go address me by anything, just call me Malam. Yeah. To me, Malam is an honor. Yes. Much more honorable than a professor. Yes. We have no word to thank you. But let me say, may Allah reward you abundantly. Inshallah. Yes. But those who are watching us right now, here, we have come to the end of today's edition of the show. I am Bashir Shah saying many thanks for watching and have a nice day ahead.